G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, it's Tuesday afternoon here in Australia, so obviously, you know, getting close to Tuesday morning stateside time, and we're waiting to see, you know, whether the markets open and we go into a, a more bullish kind of trend, or is it, you know, more just the same where we kind of travel sideways. And look, the market has retraced a little bit as I thought, you know, uh, you can't have that pump like, you know, Friday, Saturday, and then not, not have a retracement either before the markets open, so there is no CME gap, or when the markets open, then there's a CME gap. So we're basically back to around about those prices. We could see a little bit more downside, maybe into the low 33,000s, high 32,000s. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, there we go. It just jumped up there. But what I've noticed is the market cap. This was down around about 1.1, the high 1.1, low $1.2 trillion mark, not that long ago. And we've been slowly creeping our way back up. So I get the feeling like maybe the bottom is in. You know, we can't get too ahead of ourselves just yet and, you know, super excited. But the overall market cap has been jumping up. And look, some of the altcoins are really starting to pop. But and I don't mean pop in a bad way, I mean pop to the upside, like they're getting some really good gains, but we just gotta be careful this isn't a bit of a fake out before we see more downside. That is something that we need to keep in mind. But look, Bitcoin dominance dropping, this was 44%, 45%, now we're down into the 43%. ETH dominance still in 17% there, and GUI uh, prices really, really low, so ETH, sorry, gas prices. Right, as we can see, Bitcoin, it's still just in that ranging pattern over the last seven days, and it's been doing that for quite some time. But have a look at the green all over the place. We can start to see some of the altcoins are starting to do really, really well. Again, proceed with caution is my personal opinion. Never financial advice. I don't offer that because, again, could be a fake out. But again, I just get the feeling like maybe the bottom's in. Right, 24 hours. What's done really well? Oh, KuCoin up 49% in 24 hours and up 46% in the last seven days. A Comey, up nearly 40% in 24 hours and up nearly you know, 100% in the last seven days, so almost doubled its money. Synthetics Network Token, got a story coming up about that. Uh, performing really, really well over the last day, last few sort of days. It got down to $5 something. Oh, oh, unfortunately, I'd spent my money a little, couple of days before. I think I bought it for about six seven eight dollars something like that i can't remember exactly off the top of my head but unfortunately yeah didn't get any at five i would have loved to but making its move up ave compound sushi x sushi thor chain what are all these DeFi. maybe DeFi is starting to let us know that the bottom is in and we are moving up again as i said before Proceed with caution. I wouldn't be putting too much money into altcoins just yet. This could be a fake out and we see a big move to the downside and then all these just get wrecked. Because again, you can go back through these basically and one day is green, next day is red, then it's green, then it's red, then it's green, then it's red. But again, this was at $5 not that long ago, so it has almost doubled its value over however many days ago that sort of was. So... Looking good. What about losses though? Top 100. Has anything not performed well? Generally, things are doing all right. So XDC network is down, but look, still up nearly 50% seven days. Doge traveling uh, not so good uh, on a downward slope. You know, I don't want to knock Doge, uh, and I'm not knocking Doge, but fundamentally, there's not a whole lot sort of behind it. So of course, when it retraced, it was going to retrace really, really hard. But look, other things have retraced really hard as well. FTX token, all right, look, couple of losses there, but the losses are quite minimal. And generally, if you just jump to the right-hand side, things have been performing all right over the last seven days. So maybe things have changed. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Some interesting things happen here. So we can see the volume was very, very low. And we can see that we're still sort of ranging sideways. Again, within this range of sort of 42,000 or about 28,000 thereabouts, we broke above it. And now we've just been ranging, but have a look at the volatility. Big swings up and down and up and down and up and down and up and then look way down. And now the volatility starting to get very low. Now we have had a long weekend over in the States, so of course things are going to be a little bit quiet. But the volatility 
has really died off. I get the feeling like something big is going to happen. Now, now this is laughable when I say this, and I feel like a bit of a, a twit saying it, but there's three things that can happen. It can go sideways, it can go up, it can go down. I, I can't tell you exactly what it's going to do, but I just see that you know the prices have been going up a little bit in the altcoins, people are getting bullish, but also the volatility in Bitcoin is dying down at the moment. Doesn't mean tomorrow it couldn't get super volatile again, but really it has been getting less volatile since around about here. So since the 21st of June, that's almost sort of, you know, two and a half, three weeks ago, the volatility is getting less and less and less. So we're not having the big massive swings. So Bitcoin may just travel sideways for a while with low volatility, but I just get the feeling when the next move comes, it's going to be a, a substantial one. Now, I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to suddenly break out to 60,000, and I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to suddenly break down to 24,000 or something sort of crazy like that. I just get the feeling, though, when it makes its next move, it's going to be a big one. If it's going to be big, I get the feeling like we're going to get up to around this kind of $40,000 mark pretty quickly. I don't think we'll break through it. I think we go up, reject, and then come back and retest this 36,000, or we have a big move down to kind of the $27,000, $28,000 level and then start making our way back up. But we had this rising wedge here, and I'm glad this didn't just keep pushing up, uh, and we did break out of it and go sideways, because the longer this goes sideways, the more time you have to you know, get as much of this stuff as you can, you know, provided you think it's gonna go up, because when it does go up, it'll go up hard. But you know, equally, if it goes down, it's gonna go down hard. But also, have a look at the RSI. We've been in a downwards trend in the RSI for a very long time. Since the 8th of January, the RSI has been getting lower and lower and lower and lower and sort of lower. And then we hit the low point here on the 20th of May. But what's happening with the RSI now? It's getting higher and higher and higher bit of a breakdown here, but still higher than back here. What we can see in the RSI is there is a bullish divergence at the moment. Price is now, you know, slowed down. The volatility is low. Bullish uh, RSI. Bullish on the MACD, we could see a uh, crossover, you know, what they call the death crossover. So, well, not a death crossover, but anyway, a crossover to the downside. And then it was up, but more to the downside. And it just kept, in, kept getting lower and lower and lower until we hit this low here. And now look what's happening. We are breaking back to the upside. So again, maybe the bottom is in. I am cautiously optimistic at the moment. But again, I, I think if we break to the downside, you know, 24,000 is, you know, where it could go. That's if we break this $28,000 level. But I just think there's probably going to be one more possible shakeout where, again, it pushes us down to here and then starts to move up. Or, again, maybe we just travel sideways and then break to the upside. I'm, I'm optimistically optimistic, <laughs> if that makes any sense. All right, let's move on. A couple of very interesting stories, and we'll touch on DeFi as well. But first of all, all right, IBC Group plans to relocate Bitcoin mining facilities out of China and to places like the US, Canada and more. So amid the ongoing crackdown on crypto mining in China, IBC Group plans to move its mining infrastructure out of the Asian country. So the organization plans to move its workers to Canada, the USA, the UE, the U. AE, Kazakhstan, Iceland, and numerous South American locations, uh, nations, sorry. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, plenty of countries get set up in El Salvador and other places around there where they have, you know, natural green sources. And look, it's going to be cheap for them to get in there as well, to build things and all the rest of it. But what they are going to have to look for is that they go into places that are somewhat stable security-wise and things like that. Because, you know, all good to go to some, you know, South American country where it's cheap, but then, you know, I don't know, high-end criminals or something move in and take over your entire organization. That's not going to work. But good to see that, you know, less mining in China. That's what we sort of want. There still needs to be some mining in China, but it seems like China's pretty keen to just get rid of it altogether. Fair enough. But, you know, there is still China, there is still mining going on in China, I think, in things like Chia and Filecoin and that. Uh, they've had a bit of a boost, but just uh, Bitcoin mining seems to be on the outer there. All right. 
This unfortunately is sort of, a, you know, it's bad for Bitcoin. So ransomware hacking group uh, Re Revil or Re Evil, I don't know how they pronounce that, brought the networks of at least 200 US companies to their knees on Friday and is now demanding 70 million in Bitcoin. So here's the problem. They're asking for it in Bitcoin. That's going to have, you know, regulators and, you know, people who are trying to fund cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin you know, going absolutely spastic. They're going to say, see, it's used by criminals and this and that. Not understanding that, you know, very small amounts have been used by Bitcoin and that also, you know, it does leave a trail, but there are, you know, ways that, you know, the really smart people can kind of get around it. And I think it's called Tornado Cash or something like that. They can sift it through there and then it's, uh, as far as I know, impossible to follow, but someone will probably, you know, be able to work it out at some stage. But this does hurt the overall crypto space when you know these things are happening and they're asking for you know some form of cryptocurrency and payment to try and evade the law so that is not good for bitcoin and crypto in general also ubs advises stay clear of cryptocurrencies and warns regulators will crack down on crypto this is a bit of a a sensational sort of piece. I'm not saying buy Bitcoin.com, I'm saying buy UBS. So it says here, Switzerland's largest bank, UBS, has advised investors to stay clear of cryptocurrencies and build their portfolio around less risky assets. The UBS analysts warn that regulators have demonstrated they can and will crack down on crypto. So they're kind of beating this story up a little bit, but they went here. We've long warned that shifting investor sentiment on regulatory crackdowns could pop bubble-like crypto markets. No, the space is just growing. Is regulation coming? Yes. And are they going to crack down on things that you know could be nefarious and all the rest of it? Yes. But they're not going to crack down so hard on a new emerging market where the profits are insane and cripple that. They can't afford to do that. So that's what I mean. This is, it's a bit of a... Yeah, a beat up. So it says here, China has been cracking down on Bitcoin mining and payments. Yes, they have. That's China. They're allowed to do it. The rest of the world not following suit. Canada's regulator has sent notices to crypto exchanges and the regulators in Japan, the UK, Cayman Islands and Thailand have targeted global uh, crypto exchange Binance. Correct. They have. It's all part of regulating crypto, not cracking down on it. This space is not going anywhere and regulation outside of just silly heavy-handed regulation which I can't see them doing that might you know pop the bubble as they say but I think we've already had a fairly big pop you know we dropped 50% uh, in a very short amount of time regulation is coming we need to embrace regulation and just hope that, you know, they don't over-regulate it because that is what will pop, you know, this so-called uh, bubble-like crypto market if you just over-regulate it. But there's so many problems with the financial space worldwide. Crypto does look like it's a way out. A new system that can bring us out of all, you know, not all the problems, but at least a number of the problems we have. And I think governments can recognise that. And yes, they're going to come in and make sure, again, that there's no bad actors and that, you know, they know where the money's going and who it's going, to, where it's going uh, from, where it's going to, who it's going to, who it's coming from and all that kind of stuff. That is not going to, that's not a massive crackdown. That's just simply so they can keep track of what's happening. And fair enough, I don't care if governments, you know, kind of keep track of, you know, how we're spending our money in the when I say that, I mean that we're doing it legally. Other than that, you know, again, they should never have a right to say, oh, we don't personally agree with that. If it's illegal, fair enough, we can't do it. If it's not illegal, then they need to step back, mind their own business, because we're free to do what we want with our money. But regulation, we need some. That will grow the space. This article, again, not so much by Kevin James from Bitcoin.com, because this is from uh, a paper that the UBS put out, saying, you know, stay away from it. That's just a massive beat up. That's, you know, again, more FUD to try and keep this market down. And just wait, UBS are going to come out and they're going to be all over crypto at some stage. They won't have a choice. That is the way of the future. It is what's happening. Now, right, we've looked at some of the bad stuff that's going on. Here's the upside. Like I said, is DeFi maybe leading, you know, the way? 
showing us that the bottom's in and leading us out of this, you know, bearish trend that we've been in. All right. Synthetics Network hits multiple week highs as total value locked on the synthetics approaches $1 billion. So the synthetics project's native token reached uh, $9.59 after rising four days in a row by uh, up to 50%. Now that's included a sharp 18.29% using the previous daily upswing in the previous daily session. So again, and it's not just synthetics, it's a number of DeFi projects that are doing these things. The seven day adjusted time frame saw almost every top DeFi coin posting double digit gains, including Uniswap, 16%, Aave, 24%, and Compound, nearly 40%, amongst, amongst many others. So again, the DeFi space, is it maybe telling us that the bottom's in and we're starting to move out? Now, also, it's still sticking with the DeFi space, institutional adoption. That is what's really going to push the DeFi space and whether it really goes kind of, you know, mainstream and global. Seems like it might be starting. So Aave to launch KYC enabled permission DeFi for institutions. So permission means you've got to have done your KYC to be able to participate in it. And again, anyone in the DeFi space is like, you know, oh, I don't need to do that. But the rest of the world who don't understand it, they're going to want to be a part of this through their institutional banks. So again, whatever banks you have, and this is the new system. So again, this is the one where it's permissioned. It'll be, you know, the average day punter who doesn't understand how it works and simply wants to do it through their bank. They've already KYC'd through their bank. So now they get to take part in Aave. So it says here, Aave is the largest DeFi lending protocol with more than 16 billion in crypto assets locked. It's planning to launch Aave Pro, which will uh, operate segregated permission pools of whitelisted users that have passed your, the Know Your uh, Customer protocols. This removes one of the key roadblocks to regulated institutions participating in decentralized finance. So again, for, you know, the average user, we don't need it, but the rest of the world who just would have no clue, you know, really how to use this kind of how to use this kind of stuff, let alone, you know, go through KYC uh, procedures and things like that, their bank's going to do it for them because their bank has already done their KYC sort of stuff. So this really is demonstrating that the big players and, you know, TradFi, as they call it, traditional finance, they are coming to DeFi. They have no choice. They're getting left behind. They just simply cannot provide the kind of returns that DeFi can. All right, speaking of DeFi, have a look what sort of happened. So let's go for one year. This is what's happened with DeFi over the last year. And again, why I am super, super bullish on it. This is where we were in July last year. 2.256 billion dollars. Not that long ago, we got up to 88 billion dollars. I don't know how many, that's 44x basically, 44 times that space grew in a year. Now, yes, we've had a big correction. Look where we are now. Now we're only at 56 billion. But again, divide that by two, oh, that is still a massive boom. And this will continue to grow. Hence why, yeah, DeFi is one of my favorite you know, projects. I like Aave. Uh, Aave is, you know, my number one, number two, uh, and Synthetics is my number one, sort of two. You know, they, they differ depending on how their prices are doing. But there's a number of other ones, you know, Compound's good, Uniswap's good. Uh, there's a number of, uh, you know, different DeFi plays that you can get into. And again, none of it's financial advice, just my personal opinion. But I mean, you know, when it comes to derivatives, Synthetics is a country mile ahead of everyone else. So yes, its token has really come back from like a high of $27 down to $5. But again, it's starting to make its way back up. Now, last thing we need to remind ourselves is we are still in extreme fear. Again, it could get worse. It's absolutely possible. But really, if you're buying... This is where the risk to reward is generally the highest. The risk is, yes, it could go down lower, but it's probably not going to go that much lower because the f fear is already so high. But your reward, if it goes to the upside, and that's what it is, it's a big if, 
is so much more. Now again, buying Bitcoin at, you know, what is it, $34,000 at the moment? $34,000 is really going to hurt if it drops down to sort of, you know, 20000 That really will hurt. You're going to lose, you know, under half. And again, under half is still, you know, that really hurts. But if this goes to its old, all-time high... 64,000, you almost double your money. So that's what you need to remember. You could double your money if it goes to its all time high. If it goes down to 20,000, then you're going to not, you're going to lose less than half of what you put in anyway. And again, if you're here for the long term and you've seen the general uptrend, then you, you know, hopefully you would simply go, right, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, you know, I'm just going to simply hold. Now, it's not to say that Bitcoin couldn't go below 20,000, because if 64,000 was the high, completely possible that Bitcoin makes it back down to, you know, some crazy price like, you know, 10,000, $8,000. So that would really hurt from here, you know, particularly 34 down to maybe 10,000. You know, you've lost 70%. And they're the things that you need to rem remind yourself. But, you know, again, what's the probability that and possibility that this is going to, uh, you know, $10,000 possible? Yep, probable, no. What's the chances that this is going to 64000 Most probable, uh, it's probable and definitely quite possible as well. But again, that's never financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.